we're Chris and Teresa, and we would love to guide you on your fiber arts journey. We own a successful fiber processing mill and online needle felting business, experienced at raising all fiber animals, and have renovated a hundred year old school into a fiber arts retreat center. Processing, needle felting, yarn, roving, fiber animals, and sustainable agriculture are all topics discussed here. Think of this as your one stop shop for advice, information, tips, and getting your questions answered on all things from farm to needle. So pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be inspired while you learn. This is YouTube. The debut of the half-finished giraffe. Look at this cute little dude! It's a, it's a dudette, it's a girl, and oh my gosh! Is this a work of art or what? Okay, well, I'm not going to go into the logistics of this, but this is amazing oh uh, i'm sp i'm without speech speechless how amazing she is ah! Ah! Mm. she is oh my gosh she's adorable she's got an attitude she does as she should she deserves to have an attitude wow absolutely amazing okay and then also <laughs> this <laughs> we, Teresa and I even partook of a basket weaving class and we both made a beautiful, huge, huge basket. I mean, this thing is, is huge and it's, it's for blankets and I'm so excited. And if my mother is watching this, close your ears because this, if that's possible. If, if that's possible, because I made this for my mom's birthday present. So I'm super excited. I picked out the color and I'm super excited to give it to her for a birthday present. And I don't know if I can wait till December. It's going to be tough, do but it. do it. Ugh. But yeah, so. it was super fun. And it took, oh my goodness, it took a full eight hours to weave this basket because it's literally, it's rather it's large. Big. It's a big one. We should have them here. You have pictures. They'll be popping up. They're so big. Here and and there. then, mm -hmm. like, mine is a little wonky. So, a little. Mine's one, a little wonky. One, but, you know, side of it is like more. Only God is perfect. That's what and we then say. there's one that's a little more tight. Yeah. Mine's a little. A little, a little more stray up and down than what it should be, but you know, it's all good. You know, because like, like our instructor, dear Marcy, said, when you bring it home, it's not setting amongst six other baskets. It's all by itself, and it looks perfect. So, so we're going with absolutely. Okay, and then earlier this evening, Teresa and I and Mariella, we took the side-by-side -side and we drove through Nome because the cleanup has started. Their, um, um, the Loushies have taken down an old house. house, that, their house. Yep, and they're going to... Which is, they're, it was identical to their It house. was, the same footprint, everything, but it just wasn't, and they tried, they wanted to salvage it, but it just wasn't. It, it was too far gone, so they took it down, and they're going to build a new garage for their mm -hmm. home. And and then the the gentleman that that took took that home down said, "Hey, they they'd be available to take a few other homes down that are just as as much as Teresa and I like to save the old old art, old, old everything. There are some that just are too far gone in Nome. So." This needs to clean up. A yep. Bit. So so hopefully we'll we'll get the town cleaned up and we'll that'll make room for some some new lots that will be available for folks to come in and and we 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 are excited because we have two new well we had two new three new houses come in this summer and we are having another new house coming in this fall and we have hopefully we hear another one coming in either this fall or this spring and um, mr peterson's house randy peterson's house has sold we have heard 
and we we've got a new resident coming in so things are happening in Nome so they sure are. anyway so Teresa and I decided to go ahead and look at look at these beautiful pumpkins that we made I'm so proud now this is a little bit bigger this is about the size that you will make in for the kit for the pumpkin kit and we got a little excessive and and made ours a little bigger and super cute so they'll be living probably on the, the mantle mantle so when you come here you will see these we have a few quite a few questions this week mm -hmm. we do. so let's get at them have the new sheep buddied up to their new family so the new sheep are still mm -hmm. in the barn they're separated from the okay. rest of the sheep and there's seven right now yes okay and they have not interacted with the other sheep at all so 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 okay and then I remember one video where sheep seem to stay in their own groups. And I remember you said that too. They just kind of gathered and ran with their own. Yeah. So any other sheep we've ever gotten, they're always in their own little groups. Uh-huh. So you have not um, put these sheep in with the other we sheep. We haven't yet. So, so you don't know we're if this is going to. We're keeping them separate until we're make, we make sure they don't have any worms. Yep. Any diseases that they and make sure they have all their all of their vaccines. shots and vaccines. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, cool. Are Teresa's new sheep put in a quarantine for a period of time before being introduced to the rest of the herd? So exactly. how long? Yeah. Yep. So how long is this? Uh, so what has this been? I, a couple at least weeks, three weeks. Mm -hmm. So as long as possible, I think, mm -hmm. because we don't know what they're bringing in. Uh, we'd like to monitor them and make sure that mm -hmm. they're not bringing anything into the flock. Mm -hmm. um, these are all ewes, so they'll go out with the ewe, ewes that are in rotation. Um, in the, which, the rotational grazing? Yes, mm -hmm. which I think we're going to um, do their vaccines this week, I think on Wednesday night. So Okay. Which is tomorrow night. Which is tomorrow night. And so we'll probably integrate them that. So we'll, oh, we'll just see oh, how everything goes. How that and goes. They do typically sheep, uh, you know, that have come from a separate place, they'll stick together. Yeah. And I do believe they will. Mm -hmm. So we'll report back on that next week. Yes. Fine. Maybe we'll get some some new footage. Possibly. The, new, the newbies. Okay. Yes. Will you be sharing all the steps regarding the broom corn, including harvesting, cleaning, preparing for use, etc.? Absolutely, because this is all new to all of us. And and like Teresa and I and Mariella were walking through the corn today, and we were like, "Wow!" Because the stalks are so tall. Oh my goodness, they mu they're so tall, and and strong and solid. Do sheep accept new sheep into their flock easily? They do. Are they I, mean to them? 
No, I think that they they include them just fine. Do they? It's just that the new ones like tend to stick together, and they'll uh, stay separate they just on stay. their own. Okay. Because we've had several that we've introduced over the years, and mm-hmm. they will just be separate. And this is not just one particular breed. It's just. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's several several different breeds. But yeah. They're from, you know, hmm. we purchased them from this person, mm-hmm. and they're in a different, yeah, they keep themselves Interesting. Separate. They just yeah. segregate themselves. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Um, okay. How often do, okay, this is for, we did a video um, last week on rowing as compared to bats, as compared to cloud. And we showed the machines running, the carting machines running, and somebody asked, how often do all those chains fall off? Thinking of my bike chain issues. And what happens with the chains, if we have an issue, is the fiber will build up on the cogs and will actually start, so the the chains will start stripping because the claw, the cogs are so full of wool that that it can't, the chain can't even rest in the clogs properly. It, it's it's an issue. So, but but they don't generally just fall off of the cogs, you know, like a bike tire chain does. Because they're thankfully. they're yeah, thankfully they're much tighter. The chains are are generally tighter on there. But yes, we do have issues here and there on on those chains. Mm-hmm. We watch them very closely, and we between batches we do a lot of cleaning of the bearings and the cogs and the chains and everything else. Yeah, it's a whole big process that we do. How often do all? Oh, do you sell bats? No, we do not sell bats. Color and quality for bat for quilting is less important than spinning and needle felting. So wondering how to eventually set price points. And if I buy, if I can, then buy lower quality fleeces that are not great for spinning or needle felting. Absolutely, because this is very interesting because we just did a tour a couple days ago of a group that came through and we were showing them the difference between roving and cloud and what we were, we were carting on the one carter carter into cloud that we were gonna felt, we call it gut wool because we felt it into sheets that that it's got a lot of chaff in it and it's not um, the felted sheets that you would want for insoles or you'd want for the outside of the cushions. So we call it gut wool because we cut it up and we put it on the inside of our cushions and we sew, sew around them um, very similar, and, and this gal was saying, well, goodness sakes, I buy bat wool in bats that so, sometimes she buys cotton and sometimes she buys wool for her quilting because she was a quilter, and she said, oh my goodness, there'll be bugs in it and there'll be, there'll be sticks and, you know, pieces of the, if it's cotton, pieces of the the actual cotton plant in there and the same thing with wool there would be so much chaff and and that's the beauty of 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 doing the bats and the cloud which will be on the interior of of another project that absolutely you can use a lesser quality wool and that is an excellent way to use a lesser quality wool one that has um a lot more chaff than than what would be desirable in a you know a, a finished garment or or even yarn or if it has a fever break that's an excellent way to use those those wools that have the fever breaks that are going to break and so you felt it and it's 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 all good in that respect and yeah how tall is the broom corn okay we have done we've been following the broom corn from its Inception. Plant. Inception. <laughs> so tonight we measured it, and here's a little video popping up of measuring it. And how tall is it? Tall. Thir- 13 and 11 inches. That's tall. That's just about 14 inches. Okay, and the closest one was Anne 
Custer's hubby. Her husband guessed 14 inches, so he was the closest out of everybody. So, so pretty exciting. Let us know your shirt size on mm -hmm. bearcreekfelting.com. Of your, of your hubby's Ann. <laughs> And okay, and next week, what is the name? Okay, what is the name of my dog? What is the name of my brown Newfoundland puppy? Well, she's not a puppy. She's not a puppy. She's eight, but she's our baby. Mm -hmm. And if you've been to the school, you just might have met her. God bless you for joining us and... We look forward to showing you, what is a herd of giraffes called? Do we know this? A gaggle. A gaggle. <laughs> we look forward to sharing with you all of the giraffes. That, oh, That's her attitude. <laughs> That's oh, what she's thinking. For goodness sakes, she's just gorgeous. Like, so Ellie stay beautiful. tuned to join us because like in another, spots. what, week and a half, all of the retreaters will be coming for the Safari, Neil Felding Safari. Exciting. We'll share that with you. So God bless you and thank you for joining us. Yeah.